If there's one thing where NVIDIA is behind AMD at the current moment, is their application. If you go, for example, to the Radeon software, you have lots of things that you can do inside. You have um, overclocking, you have several things there. And look at the design. The design is just, well, the design is just recent. On the NVIDIA side, though, you have this. Something like a control panel that came from 2003 and Windows XP. But rejoice, NVIDIA fans, because you've been heard. And today I'm actually testing the new NVIDIA app that NVIDIA has been that NVIDIA has released, okay? It is still in beta, it is not officially released, so it isn't inside the drivers yet. It isn't inside... This is my cat, by the way. <laughs> Flock. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. It is not inside the driver package yet, but all you have to do is go, for example, to Google, search to uh, NVIDIA app, for example, and it will immediately appear in their website, NVIDIA app, and it states it is in beta, of course, because it is. And all you have to do is download it, install the recent drivers that you have, download the NVIDIA app and install it. And that's basically it. After installing the app, you'll have this icon here saying only NVIDIA, doesn't say NVIDIA app, doesn't say anything. Basically, this is the installer of the NVIDIA app, by the way. So open it and you immediately have this menu. So one of the things that you that you that we actually have in comparison to the previous application where uh, it was basically the GeForce experience, we had the control panel and the GeForce experience. This one kind of does what both do mostly and does not require any kind of login. And yes, I can finally go in front because my cat <laughs> just went to the ground. Once again, does not require any kind of login, which is a win-win situation in my book, definitely. One thing that annoyed the hell out of me when trying to use, for example, the recording features or the broadcasting features or anything else with NVIDIA cards is that I had to kind of log in, register, go to my email, confirm the email, then go to the application and so on. It was kind of a pain in the ass. Something that, that we could do, of course, it was not hard, but it was just annoying. For example, on the home menu, we have the NVIDIA app sponsor, of course, with a reward that you can actually take in on, on the redeem tab, let's call it that, a tab. Then you have the library which shows the games that you have installed. You can go see all and it goes to the graphics settings, but still. Then you have this cover and you have GeForce Now, NVIDIA Broadcast, NVIDIA Omnis Omniverse, sorry, I was gonna say Omnisphere. <laughs> NVIDIA Canvas, iCat and Frame View. And now you can get the applications installed just by clicking on Get. Just go, press Get done as easy as it can be as soon as you go to the drivers tab you have the driver that you have installed it says it is up to date of course with game ready drivers you can select in between the game ready driver and the studio driver which is a nice thing it will show you the game that has been now supported with the new drivers in this case nightingale and that it supports the lss3 and reflex you have the software support for RTX HDR, a new AI-powered NVIDIA app freestyle filter that seamlessly adds HDR high dynamic range to SDR standard dynamic range games. It kind of emulates HDR via AI-powered and according to what some people said, it actually works pretty well. So it's, it's a nice feature definitely for people that love HDR. I don't love HDR that much, so... It is not for me, let's say, for now at least. Support for RTX Dynamic Vibrance, an AI-powered NVIDIA app freestyle filter that improves upon the NVIDIA Control Panel digital vibrance feature, further enhancing visual clarity in games, which supposedly improves upon the older feature. And then we have Optimal Settings profiles that were introduced for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, Nightingale, Pacific Drive, and Skull and Bones. Having the what's fixed as well with gaming, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, stability issues when running Vulcan API, and then some general things as well. We should have here the, the known issues as well because they exist, but that wouldn't look that great, <laughs> I guess. As for the graphic settings, we also have some interesting things. Let's start with the global settings because it's easier to explain. On the global settings, well, we have the driver settings, which are the ones that aren't game related. Well, they will apply on your game, of course, but aren't 
but aren't just for one game in specific. So we have the RTX Dynamic Vibrance, which once again, um, boosts visual clarity for your games using AI, is content adaptive, prevents color crushing and works on a per app basis. You can manually adjust your preferences in the overlay or a per app basis. I know some people that actually like to use these options like the dynamic vibrance for games like CSGO because they can see the opponents better uh, in some scenarios where it is a little darker or so on. Uh, they can have the more defined lines and they can, they can kind of notice the opponents better and they use this because of that. Then we have the RTX HDR, which once again is that, um, that AI-powered feature that enables HDR content on SDR content without the need of Windows doing the Auto HDR, because we all know that the Auto HDR on Windows is actually bad. And according to what I've read in, in some forums and so on, the RTX HDR is actually pretty good, so that's a plus. Then we have the CUDA GPUs. You can select the GPU that you want to, to perform. For example, if I had two or three GPUs in my computer, I could actually select the one that I wanted uh, to play games and so on, just an example. We also have the DSR that we had before. Digital super resolution, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Dynamic super resolution, my bad. Then we have the image scaling, which is basically um, a non-temporal upscaling technique, special, spe uh, special technique like we have, for example, with RSR on the AMD side, so that's fine. Not great, but okay for people that don't have the LSS or FSR2 or FSR3 or so on. Then we have the low latency mode that we can select on or off, of course. We can select maximum frame rate, a thing that is very, very welcomed. I tried this on the control panel, but it just didn't work that, that well. In my experience, it just didn't work that well. I, I use a lot AMD Chill, and AMD Chill worked far better than this, with way better frame times, uh, way better power drop consumption, much better than this. Maybe on the new app it works much better than it did on the control panel. I hope so. Then we have the monitor technology, where we can select <coughs> the fixed refresh or the G-Sync compatible. Shader cache size as well. We can select the driver default or we can select like 100 gigabytes to let lots of shaders go into the into the system in order to improve the performance. If, if needed, let's say that. Then we have the option to enable vertical sync. And then we have the variable rate super sampling for virtual reality. For VR, you can select always on or adaptive. Let me see what this does. This variable rate super sampling option targets image quality improvements by applying super sampling selectively on the central region of a frame where it matters the most for virtual, for virtual reality headsets. So basically it seems like it is some kind of TAA or MSAA, kind of an anti-aliasing. The application needs to be profiled by Nvidia and have MSAA enabled, okay, okay. But that's nice actually, so kind of a forced TAA or a forced MSAA MSAA, just MSAA, for um, virtual reality, which is a nice thing as well. Now we have the program settings, which is one of the most interesting parts of the software. As you can see, we have lots lots of, uh, of software installed here, basically the games that I have and some, soft, some other software. Uh, we have 40 programs, but I actually have more than that. Let's go, for example, for Cyberpunk 2077. As you can see, these options that you see here on the NVIDIA software, on the NVIDIA app, are the options inside the game. You have the slider, the normal, well, performance and quality slider, where you can select the, um, the performance that you want. And as soon as you change the numbers, as you can see, it will change the options as well. It turns off ambient occlusion, anisotropy goes to one, uh, cascade shadows range low and so on. As soon as you go and up it, it will increase the settings as well, full screen, ultra, and so on. We have the several options of Cyberpunk 2077 inside the NVIDIA software, and we don't even need to go inside the game to change them. We can change the options inside the game by changing them in the NVIDIA app. You can even select the, the resolution that you want. And these are basically the graphic settings when using a per app basis. So graphic settings just for Cyberpunk 2077. But as for these options, I would like to select them um, or to change them one by one, but I can't actually do that. Although I can adjust the slider and the settings will immediately change. For example, as soon as I, as I go to maximum quality, it changes from the LSS balanced to NVIDIA DLSS DLAA. Basically no upscaling, 
the settings of ray tracing go to psycho and so on. It's interesting. This is still in beta, and as soon as it goes to, to the official release, let's say that, it will be much better, and it is already quite interesting. If you go here for Robocop, it will enable these settings only for Robocop, and so on, so on, so on, with any of the games that you have here, which is actually a nice feature. Not spectacular, nothing, nothing really, really new, but something interesting, and it definitely looks much better, and is much easier to use than the previous software that we had. Then we have the Redeem tab, which basically allows us to, to redeem a Call of Duty GeForce XP bundle. I have no interest in this. Then we have the settings, which shows you the system, notifications, where you can select if you want or not available rewards, or if you want driver updates. Then we have the About, Configuration, Privacy and so on. You can select all the settings that you want here or not. And still on the system, we have the NVIDIA Overlay, that with the app is also changed a bit. For example, Alt-Z or click here for the NVIDIA overlay. And now we have a side tab with the NVIDIA overlay. And it shows um, the amount of time that you are recording, something that the MD drivers show as well. Then we have the instant replay. We have the, the screenshots. We have photos, highlights, game filters to change on the fly. If you have profiles or if you have the RTX Dynamic Vibrance or RTX HDR, you can simply change them on the fly. It works pretty well, actually. Uh, then we have statistics, on or off. You can enable or disable everything that you want. It shows here, for example, GPU utilization, CPU utilization, average PC latency, everything you have, basically, what you have also, uh, what you had before, but now kind of better distributed. It just looks better. You have the gallery. You can go to the settings as well. And you have shortcut controls, heads, uh, heads up display, sorry. So once again, for example, statistics overlay, I can just disable them. Bottom left, bottom center, and they will show there. Bottom right, center right, and so on, so on, so on. Upper right. Now I actually have to disable the statistics, I guess, <laughs> because I don't want them showing there. So yeah, you have all the options that, it, that you need here with notifications as well, with uh, audio, video capture. The camera is actually in front of the of the, um, the monitor there, video and so on. You can select here, for example, the desktop capture or not. I'm currently recording. You can select the instant replay time and you can do one thing that you couldn't do before, at least in the, um, on the GeForce experience, is that basically you can now select 120 FPS. In here where you see 60 FPS, you can now select 120. It doesn't allow me, of course, because I'm using the software to record the desktop and this video, but you can now select 30, 60 and 120 FPS. And at least before, in the drivers that I, tr that I tried like one month ago, you could not uh, record that c at more than 60 FPS. That was the limit at least on the GeForce experience and at least from what I tried, but now you can record at 120 FPS. That, that's one of the things that I wanted from Nvidia since AMD already does that. You can record at 30, 60, 90 and 120 and now we can do the same on the NVIDIA side. It just looks much better overall, and it's much easier to use. The app is also very, very light. It's much lighter. This app just works very well, even in beta settings. And once again, you have everything that you need here, or you should have everything that you need here. Props to NVIDIA for finally making this happen. The, the older application just looked like 2004 Windows XP. I know that Windows XP is from 2001, but it just looked really, really old, and it just needed a revamp, an overall revamp in terms of design and maybe usability, and that's what they did here. And it, it actually looks cool, and finally we need no login whatsoever, which is, which was the, the thing that annoyed me the most to record and so on. Nice, very nice actually. As a Navid AMD user that also has NVIDIA cards as well, this is a major upgrade for the NVIDIA side because I know that people, when people were changing to the AMD side from the NVIDIA one, they were like, well, the software looks much better. We have so many, so many things here um, compared to the, to the NVIDIA side where we have that old control panel and so on. Now, NVIDIA actually is more or less on par with AMD on that department. The only thing that I would like to see here in built in the app would be overclocking as well. I would like to see overclocking uh, included overclocking and maybe undervolting. So we didn't need to use the the MS Afterburner to do that. That that would be great. But besides besides that, the application even on its beta state 
looks and feels pretty solid. And that's all for today's video guys, thank you very much for watching. Once again, if you don't know how to install the app, just go to Google, search for NVIDIA app, install it, and once again it won't overwrite your control panel or GeForce gaming experience, but you can use it without the need of the control panel and GeForce experience. It just works much better, it is lighter, and overall it has all you need, or close to everything you need. So great. Thank you very much for watching once again and see you in the next video guys. Cheers.